Today is the digital of everything. Digital process, digital enterprise systems, digital workflows. For enterprises, being digital ready isn't a win-win answer. Success is factored on agility of embracing change, ability to evolve processes and functions, leading to digital's new paradigm. At Arian Pro, it's this new world order of digital we're helping enterprise adapt to with advanced, accelerated, platform-led transformation. Advanced banking transformation, accelerated technology innovation, platform-led one digital ecosystem. Transformation across the business landscape. We've guided multiple enterprises to this paradigm with a transformation success in banking and tech innovation. With banking transformation as our forte, we have led grants transformation redefining retail banking touchpoints, digitization of corporate banking with next-gen transaction banking solutions, benchmarked to process 5 million bank transactions per hour, end-to-end -end solution suite that eases credit risk management, supporting over 1 trillion USD assets in credit risk management, treasury and capital market services, comprehensive real-time FX platform to view and negotiate FX rates. Beyond banking, we're also advancing tech innovation for governments and enterprises, smart city and smart mobility projects, 20,000 plus smart terminal installations for metro railways and bus depots, advancing mobility, open look card technology empowering five lock commuters, managed IT, data center, and hybrid cloud services. With one digital ecosystem of multiple in-house technology solutions as our guiding compass. Converging it all, we transform the adapt journeys of 100 plus enterprises with 1,700 plus technologists across 24 offices in 14 countries, with global recognition celebrating our achievements. In the age of the digital of everything, we're leading businesses to adapt to this new world order globally. We're your adapt partner. We are Aryan Pro. Uh, welcome, friends. My name is Avinash Gorakshakar, and I welcome all of you to another interesting series of face to face. Uh, corporate series where we interview promising corporates and discuss their business models, their future plans with the top management of these companies. And friends, today uh, we have a very interesting company by the name of Orin Pro Solutions Limited. And we have the privilege of having Mr. Ashish Rai, Vice Chairman and President of the company. Ashish, welcome to the show and thank you very much for sparing your valuable time today. Thank you, Avinash. Thanks for having me. So Ashish, uh, you know, before we deep dive into the, uh, you know, the uh, questions for the company, uh, you know, I have, uh, I understand that uh, you've joined Orient Pro Solutions recently, and you were earlier with FIS where you used to lead the Southeast Asian region. Now, one question which is little, uh, uh, you know, uh, important, uh, not only from myself, but from the entire market point of view, is that what made you join Orient Pro Solutions? And what was the kind of challenge you saw in this company, which made you come and join this, you know, company at this position? If you could give some color on this. Sure. So, um, look, a little bit on my background. I have spent the last 20, 25 years um, working for mostly enterprise financial technology leaders. I, I spent a lot of time with a firm called Finastra, which is clearly one of the top three or four enterprise fintech uh, firms around. And then I joined, uh, then I was uh, last 10 years with uh, FIS, which, as you say, is clearly the, the number one um, sort of enterprise financial technology software firm. I was running the business in Asia Pacific, Middle East, and Africa. Uh, by far the the largest enterprise software business in that space in the region. Um, so, I mean, last 20, 25 years, I have spent um, learning one and only one thing, which is how to build a, a world class enterprise fintech business. So, so um, the the point of joining Orient Pro, I've been associated with Orient Pro for some time as an investor. I've been there for three years. Um, and uh, I joined six months back, um, as you mentioned, right? And, and the goal is to really build out a world-class um, products and platforms player. Now, why um, why do this? Why do this now? Um, it's it's largely comes down to where we see the 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 Indian IT industry itself, the Asian technology industry going. Um, you know, if, if you look if you look at it. Um, 
Avinash, the, the whole Indian IT services in, in IT industry, for example, is, is, is like a $250 billion industry, probably 90, 95% of it is services, right? Now, which is where uh, bulk of it is outsourcing, which is where I build something for someone else. Now, if you, if you compare it to uh, any industry, uh, anywhere in the world, you, you take auto, you take electronics, you take high tech, I right? take semiconductors, and you look at the big exporters everywhere, look at Japan, look at Korea, look at China, um, almost everyone starts off the same way. I, I The commoditized outsourcing business, I build something for someone else. You know, Toyota, when it started, was a hand loom maker. Samsung, you know, when it was 20, 25 years old, was building a black and white television with Hitachi, um, right? But eventually, all industries move to, let's build our own IP, let's build our own products, let's build our own global brands, right? So, and that is where we see the whole Asian IT, Indian IT going as well. The $225 billion, $250 billion will become a trillion dollars. I'm very confident of that. But it will not happen by quadrupling the number of people. So eventually, the industry will move towards products. Industry will move towards platforms, right? So um, I'm not saying Orion Pro is going to be that trillion dollar company. Um, what I'm saying is we've got a ticket to the game. I think we've got one of the strongest tickets to the game, right? And so, so the idea of starting now the idea of starting with this was to build a world-class products and platforms player so that's what that's what we are trying to do so fine i think uh, very articulately mentioned ashish now uh, first question from my side is you know if you could help our investors understand basically mm -hmm. when you say platform business and ip related business i mean if you could broadly tell us you know what how is our business model positioned if you could give us some color on that in a very simple way so that all our viewers can understand what exactly is uh, you know the company doing what are the kind of profile of clients the company is catering to if you could give us some color there so what we are trying to build in very simple terms is a global ip led products and platforms player right now where do we build these products we build these products in a few chosen segments banking being one payments being the other one, transit being another, and some of the other segments we are incubating at the moment. Essentially, we choose segments which have one very long demand runways in our view, where we believe the leadership is fragmented or contested, and we've got, we've got an ability to take share, and then we have an ability to build absolute globally competitive tier one IP in that space, right? So when we choose, we choose those segments, and then we go about building up products and platform business there, right? So I think that is essentially what we are trying to do. Um, it's in each of those segments, we have a number of offerings which are out. Uh, we believe, um, you know, so so I think, you know, we started this strategic pivot, if you may, um, three or four years back, Avinash, right? And I think how we went about doing this was very, very simple. We, we so we had a view that over the long term, um, uh, we don't want to be an undifferentiated IT services provider because we believe the long-term earnings power in that business will go down. So you're looking out 15, 20 years, right? So we said we want to build an IP-based business. When we want to go down that path, then we said, we, you know, if we are a single product business, it opens us up to a lot of volatility in terms of revenue streams and demand. So we want to have a, a much more diversified portfolio of IP assets, right? So that's what we went about building, right? So we've been going about this for the last three, four years, methodically um, choose the strategy. Then we've gone about and simplified the structure in terms of focusing on the segments, which also meant we divested from some of the other businesses, which were no longer our core focus, for example, um, cybersecurity business in the US. We also had a spin-off. We also closed down a couple of uh, offering lines, product lines, right? Uh, so then we sharply focused on those segments. Then we went about um, building out a management team, which is completely world-class management team with the right level of mix of experience within Orion Pro as well as experience outside in the industry. I myself, as you mentioned, joined six or seven months back. We had both the segments led by very, very strong leaders in in, in Shekhar and in Sanjay, um, and we recruited the right level of talent at the next level to bring in that specialist expertise from, from you know, some of the global players, et cetera, right? So, so we went about building the team and now we are um, executing on it strongly. As you would say, um, you would have seen, I think the results are there for us to see, right? Although this is a very long game, 
um, for the last um, three years or so, we've been growing at a pretty healthy clip, clip of somewhere in the range of 30%, both top line as well as bottom line. So we already see um, some promising signs and, and we keep on executing on the strategy. Okay. I think Ashish, uh, very well explained. Now tell me one thing, uh, the banking and fintech sectors are important sectors for you, but you've got one division called the technology innovation group. So if you could, you know, share with us, what exactly does this division do? And uh, you all have also, uh, you know, made an entry into the payment business. Now, how big is the opportunity for the payment business for you? If you could share your thoughts. So if you allow me, Avinash, let me just go through all the three segments in, 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 a, in a little bit of detail, right? So uh, banking and fintech, just still to cover it briefly, focus exclusively on the large bank uh, banks that we have. So we've got a set of software products, um, primarily in the lending space, loan origination space as well as the transaction banking space. Now, in each of these spaces, like I said, we want to build out tier one tier one IP. So the low origination product, for example, um, is rated by one of the top analysts, which is called Chartis, squarely in the leader's quadrant globally, right? So that's banking and fintech, um, strongly growing business across technology innovation group that, that you asked about. It's, um, it's a group of businesses where we both incubate new technology as well as We've got some scaled up businesses there now, transit being the prominent one. So in the transit space, what we are building out, we believe is the most integrated end-to-end -end offering in the space. So we span not just the software, the AFC side and the payment stack, but we also span the hardware side of it where we've got you know cutting edge R&D in terms of building out the, 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 the high tech uh, validators, um, car readers, et cetera, that are involved in the, in the payment chain, right? So the goal is to, um, goal is to not, not sit inside a box where we say we are a software vendor, but really look at the whole value chain. What, what does the customer buy and occupy every point on that value chain with the most cost efficient competitive IP as well as manufacturing cap capability there, right? So, um, I think we built out a very compelling offering. Again, similar to the lending side, what tells me we have tier one IP? Um, for example, we, we announced this win in California recently, global competitive RFP to move from closed loop payments to open loop payments. And we are one of the vendors selected already rolling out in five or six series in California, right? So probably the most competitive global RFP and we um, went in and won that, right? So that again tells me we have the ability to go and compete with anyone in the world, right? So those are the sort of two big segments um, if I come on to payments, which is the, the, the third part of what you asked for. Um, so payments is a relatively new business for us. And we've got several legs to that payment. So we always had a very strong payment IP inside Orient Pro. Uh, we have a very strong fintech business that uses that IP, even in the US. Um, for example, we, we announced um, an $18 million um, large win recently. That is, again, using the same payments IP. Um, what we launched recently was a business called Oropay, which is already live with B2C in, in India, already live with B2B payments in, in Singapore in, in partnership with you know, global leaders like Stripe and, 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 and FIS WorldPay. Um, the, the goal there, Avinash, is not to really um, become another commoditized payment gateway, for example. right? So I have no desire to get into a, you know, a business where there is a race to the bottom on margins. The goal is to complete the offering stack that Orion Pro has in, in businesses where we have a stranglehold, for example, transit, right? So it, it allows us to increase our share of the pie. It allows us to expand our margins and we can control uh, the margin level in that business, right? So, so the goal is not to you know get to the commoditized end of the business, but play to our strengths in the B2B space as well as in the B2B space. Oh, fine. I think uh, Ashish, uh... From my understanding, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, is the transit business a very big opportunity for Orion Pro now going forward? Because uh, you all have done several projects in the transit segment. So going forward, is the transit segment going to offer a significantly higher growth as compared to all the other segments? If you could share, uh, you know, some thoughts here. Yeah, so transit will almost certainly, you know, over the short to midterm, that, that is a very good observation, Avinash. I think it will grow much faster than the enterprise in the short to midterm. Why is that? One, as I said, we believe we've created one of the most competitive end-to-end -end offering in the space, absolutely cutting edge when it comes to open loop payments, account-based ticketing, 
and the software stack that goes with it, right? Uh, the second is just what is happening in the world, right? Still, most of the world transit systems, for example, you know, the California example that I gave exists on closed loop payments on fairly old technology. And pretty much everyone is moving from closed loop to open loop to the latest, you know, QR code tickets to account based ticketing, all that stuff, right? So, so almost all transit organizations are in need of transformation. We already see movements happening, you know, in, in, in US and we've had uh, you know, successes all across. So US, uh, we've had a very big success. Now we've expanded our sales team. We are we're really um, going all out to expand in US. Latin America, we've had success. Africa, we've had success. India, um, I mean, we were really proud when about a month back, um, Her Excellency um, President Murmu inaugurated Haryana Transport, which is, you know, our implementation of, of open loop payments called by Orion Pro. Uh, so Haryana Transport, UP Transport, Nagpur Metro, Noida Metro, Kanpur Metro, uh, you know, there's a lot of successes in India as well. Uh, we feel very, very good about that business. One, we are competitive. Second, the size of opportunity is large. Uh, of course, we are very small compared to the double digit billion dollar players, you know, who, who may be world leaders. But I think we've got the most cutting edge tech and we are going out and taking share. It doesn't take much for us to keep growing at a very high rate on that business. Uh, Ashish, another you know segment which uh, Orin Pro is very strong is the smart city segment. I was reading your uh, annual report where I think you have executed several projects. So you know what is the kind of uh, growth map which we could expect you know from this segment for Orin Pro? How big is the opportunity and you know what are the kind of tailwinds which the company is seeing here? Yeah, so I think smart city for us is it's somewhat the opposite of what you are saying on transit. I believe the long term opportunity is large. But over the short to midterm, um, we don't see a lot of growth. I think a lot of it, Avnash, was a bet on India and 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 the the digitization of India. So what has happened is uh, we've seen a bit of a slowdown on the on the smart city side. But what has happened is components of that business we are deploying in a, a lot of other other areas, right? Surveillance, for example. You know, so so I think we see components of opportunity, which we are able to go out and implement. I don't think it would be a very large share. Actually, I don't think it will contribute in net to our growth uh, over the next, let's say, 12 to 24 months. Over the long term, I do agree with you. I think it's a it's a fairly large opportunity. Okay. Now, Ashish, uh, one more strategic question which I wanted to ask you. You all have made two main acquisitions, that is Toshi as well as, uh, you know, SG Soft. Now, in what strategic way are these acquisitions actually fueling the growth for you in the transit business as well as the other businesses? If you could you know, tell us what is the company strategy uh, in utilizing the vertical strength of these companies to ensure that you give a, virtually a very good product on the transit side as well as some other products. So if you could share your thoughts. Yeah. So look, I think both of them, it, it plays to our strategy of occupying all points on the value chain. So it's essentially uh, on the transit value chain. Right. So basically, we 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 went in with an offering. So if you see, most of the uh, both SC Soft as well as Toshi are are hardware shops. Right. Um, SC Soft is really cutting edge in terms of R and D on the high tech electronic end of it. Right. In terms of building out validators and all, and we've just doubled down on that and strengthened the R and D setup there. Um, and and uh, Toshi is very good at the hardware side of it. So um, both of them together allowed us to backward integrate and occupy the whole chain. I think that is that is the thing. So today we have some of the most competitive cost points and some of the most complete offerings in that space, right? Um, and, and that is where it, SC Soft acquisition, I think we already now own 90% of it. Uh, we got a 10% remaining, we'll finish that off. And Toshi was a recent one. Um, it is significant commitment um, in terms of investment from, from us, but we feel very, very good about the combined offering that we now have out in the market, right? The second part you say is very interesting on where else can, can these strengths play to us, right? So, and I think that is what is happening to us now. For example, now that we have Toshi, we had um, we had a bunch of um, sort of retail branch transformation offerings. For example, you know, the banking kiosks, virtual branches, uh, things like that. Uh, we have uh, been able to now start leveraging the manufacturing capacity we built out and the design capability we built out in terms of using it across that business as well, right? So I think over time, this will really give us a very, very um, sort of strong 
footprint on the hardware side, which will allow us to drive margins a lot more strongly than we have in the past. Okay. Uh, Ashish, uh, uh, you know, there was another small acquisition. I remember during the previous con call, you had mentioned that company has acquired another small acquisition. I don't remember the name of the company, but uh, this was also another recent acquisition. So, you know, if you could tell us what exactly is the thought process of acquiring this small company. Uh, hmm. uh, I beg your pardon, I don't remember the name, uh, but, uh, you know, this was also another latest acquisition, which I think you had mentioned a lot in your recent con call. So if you could, you know, tell yeah. us something about it. Yeah, so that, that is a, um, a firm called Hello Patients that we acquired out in the US, um, right? And, and it happened to be, uh, so it was a it was a small tuck-in for us from the US business, but very strategic for us. Um, it, it was an existing client for our payment stack. Uh, once we brought them in, one is obviously the ability to play in, in um, with uh, a, a fintech out in the US business right so one is the organic business that comes with it that itself and that that will grow overall but that's that's less material than the strategic value of it so what what really has happened is for example the um the recent uh, uh, 18 million dollar deal that i mentioned um that we won in in the us uh, the business came with a lot of capabilities that allow us to play in the much wider payment space in the us uh, so, so some of these, uh, some of the wins that we've had recently, as well as some of the wins will, uh, you know, some of the deals that we are discussing right now, uh, it becomes a lot more executable because of the strength that the business brought in, right? So it's not just the business itself, which itself will grow, but it's also the strategic value that comes to the rest of the payments business because we become a, a more of a full spectrum shop uh, in the payment space in the US. So that can be very, very promising for us. Uh, Ashish, now coming on the macro side, you know, uh, although, you know, our intro does not have a very large exposure to the US market, but, you know, whatever we are hearing recently, you know, from US as well as Europe. Now, to what extent, you know, these kind of global headwinds would uh, have some impact on the company going forward? Uh, is it that the company is fairly insulated and does not have a very large exposure to the US market? Or, you know, it does have a small presence and maybe growth in those markets would get impacted in the near term because of these, uh, you know, global factors, uh, you know, what is the ground reality telling us as of now? Yeah. So look, we, we hear about <laughs> recessions as much as you hear about recessions, right. And, and in the Western world, especially, um, um, I don't think we have any specific, um, additional knowledge in terms of the macro itself, right. I think the macro environment worsens if the, if the Western world goes into a recession, I, I, I can't imagine that would be a good thing for any business. Right. So it would be painful as it is. Right. So in, in, in that context, if you look at our business, I believe it's an opportunity for us to outperform versus uh, most of the other players. Um, right. Uh, why is that one? Where is the talk of recession coming from? The talk of recession is coming in from the increase in uh, cost of money, right? Increase in interest rates, right? Um, now, increase in interest rates in general may be bad for the economy, but um, from my experience, it it's probably a, not such a bad news for a corporate bank, right? So where in, where in banking do we make money? We make money from uh, loan origination systems, collateral system, limit system. I believe um, as the, as, as, as the world goes into this um, high interest rate environment, um, corporate banks loans is where that's the heart of a corporate bank and i think that is where the banks will make money i don't think that is necessarily a bad for the bank now of course there is no mna action and investment banking fees will come down and all that stuff but i don't think it's bad for uh, from the standpoint of uh, loan origination systems and i if anything i think the demand to differentiate on that side will only increase so so probably the need for digital transformation on that side will increase so that is one i think it's generally not such a bad thing for banking business. And we see that in terms of the demand that's coming in. So we've okay. seen demand grow materially over the last few years, right? The second is large part of the business, if you see is transit. Uh, I believe the movement from closed loop to open loop payments, I don't think that is. I think it's a secular uh, movement. It will happen. It's just the need of the hour. Again, we, we've not seen any slowdown in demand so far. Um, and I, I don't see why uh, we should see a slowdown in demand. So net net, if I look at it, um, our pipelines are bigger than they were. Our conversion is stronger than it was. 
Um, we don't see any of our big segments slowing down. Uh, I believe if there's a widespread global recession, probably it affects everyone. Uh, but um, I would bet on us at least related to the industry uh, continuing to perform um, strongly. Uh, Ashish, now coming on the domestic banking side, you know, we have seen for the first time uh, credit growth exceeding 15, 16%. And uh, you have a very good, uh, you know, set of domestic banks, including the private as well as the public sector banks. And you have very successful platforms like iCashPro as well as the smart lending platforms. Now tell me on the domestic side of the market, what kind of signals are you getting? Do you see them some sort of buoyancy coming in from the banking segment? Because, you know, we are seeing a lot of banks now opting for uh, you know, new technology platforms, new, you know, new kind of caps, uh, expenditures are being incurred for new uh, products. So, you know, in that sense, uh, will Orient Pro be able to get a higher wallet share from these kind of, uh, you know, kind of customers? Yeah, so definitely. It's it's quite funny, Avinash, right? If you look at it with all this talk of recession in the Western world, if you actually go and look at uh, what the Indian banks are doing, I think, uh, one, obviously, uh, the balance sheets are very, very healthy, um, right now, plus there is also an appetite for growth. So, so what we see, um, honestly, in the Indian setup right now is banks have an appetite to 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 create those differentiators, to invest on technology, to create the differentiators, and and we don't really see you know any slowdown at all as far as the banking set segment is concerned, right? So, I, I would I would sort of agree with you on this one. I think um, I think the banking sector in India is probably set for a fairly strong period. Now, again, I think no one is insulated from a, a big global recession if it happens, but, you know, we don't, we don't see it. We are not the best forecasters, so we, we, we have no idea um, whether that happens or not. But so far, the Indian banking sector seems to be doing um, the right investments in terms of creating the long-term um, differentiators, at least the, the larger banks, both in the public and the private sector. Now, uh, Ashish, coming to the kind of uh, business scenario, you know, we already know the numbers as of December 22. I mean, if you could share your thoughts, like, you know, uh, currently as on date, you know, how's the demand environment? How's the, uh, you know, order book shaping up? And most importantly, you know, in terms of margins, I remember you telling uh, all the analysts in the con call that margins will be maintained. So can we expect that, you know, with better products coming in, better efficiencies playing out, we could possibly see margin improvement, at least not in the short term, but in the longer term, you know, considering that you all are very tightly managed and your products are pretty unique. So, you know, both on the margins as well on the demand, uh, you know, order book side, uh, post-December, if you could give us some outlook without putting a number, of course, uh, what's the kind of, you know, uh, feel you're getting, you know, as of now? Yeah. So um, on the revenue side, we've been growing at something in the range of 30% for some time now. Uh, we do not see any um, material change in demand. The pipeline this year is, um, is, is, is quite significantly bigger than the pipeline last year. Now, there is a reason why we don't publish pipeline. I've, I've explained that uh, before. I think some of the deals in our pipeline tend to be very, very large, and, and we just don't want to um, mislead by publishing a very large number of pipeline. But order book we do publish, and at the end of Q3, we published an order book of 760 crores, which was, again, quite a bit higher than uh, the order book at the end of Q2, right? So the order book is growing. Bulk of the order book for us is always executable over the next 12 months, given the way we declare our order values. Um, so, so, you know, I think from let's say the next 12 to 18 month standpoint, both the pipeline is 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 strong, uh, uh, the deal conversions are strong, as well as the existing order book is fairly large. Uh, so so I I, I don't see um, so it's not even I don't see. I think basically we will um, continue to um, stay on our planned growth number. Right now we don't really give any official guidance or or anything like that. But if you look at um, Orion Pro as a business, we plan to grow at 25 to 30%, both on top line as well as earnings. That's what we've been very transparent about. That is our plan. Uh, it's not a guidance, but we stick to that plan over the short term, over the medium term, over the long term, right? Now, um, it, people who have been following Orion Pro as a business, I think we listed in 2005. Um, if you see FY05, the revenue was 10 and a half crores. The the pat was two point seven crores if I remember correctly, right? So if you if you look at it from um, from two thousand five over seventeen years, um, we'll finish this year at at you know again finish at the twenty five to thirty percent growth that we said. 
uh, we would have compounded revenues at 25 or 26%. We would have compounded profits at 25 or 26%, right? So I think that is the long-term trajectory we've been on for the last 17 years. I don't see why we can continue it for very, very long term, right? So I think that is why we plan 25 to 30%. I think that is where we've been and that is where we plan to be, you know, for, um, you know, medium term to long term. I think fine. I think uh, point taken, Ashish. Now tell me, Ashish, one thing which I observed is, you know, uh, unlike uh, the other IT companies, you know, probably they are in a different, uh, you know, service bracket. Your working capital cycle is slightly more elongated as compared to the other companies. Now, can we expect some improvement going forward with a better kind of uh, execution, better cash conversion cycle? If you could, you know, uh, you know, cover this part, because, you know, this is one area where most people feel that the working capital is slightly, is slightly elongated. So what are the reasons, first of all, and can we expect some improvement in the coming years? Yeah, working capital, um, you know, there's almost no technology business that I can think of, um, at least in the listed world, that is directly comparable, right? Because there's almost no one who spans um, the full spectrum of technology from hardware to software, right? And there are very few, um, even, even software, there are very few software product vendors out there, right? So it's it's hard to benchmark it. Um, uh, of course, you know, if you look at the rest of the IT industry, which is primarily services, services is almost like a cash business, right? I mean, um, there's a tight cycle, you know, I put 1000 people, I get 1000 people of revenue, I put 10,000 people, I get 10,000 people of revenue. It's a straightforward business, linear economics, um, tight cycle, right? Um, the moment you get into the products business, uh, there will be a need for working capital, right? Um, so, um, and the moment you expand into hardware, um, you know, where, where you need manufacturing capacity, and, and obviously the, the need to keep inventory and stuff, again, the working capital uh, would expand, right? Um, I, so we benchmark ourselves largely with global players who would play full spectrum, for example, FIS or, or Finastra or, or players like that. Um, I think we are roughly in the ballpark. We use work, working capital. Um, so it's two things, right? So one is inventory. I think we will get tighter in terms of managing inventory. That's possible. But from time to time, depending on how the supply chain is doing, we may need to keep inventories, right? Because it becomes a competitive tool for the business, um, right? Especially, you know, when it comes to picking up very large orders, it, it really helps us if we're carrying an inventory of our latest products, right? So, so that is that is one. So we may choose to do it. The second is the payables. Um, I think that is possible that the payable cycle improves, uh, sorry, receivables, sorry. So, so I, I think it's possible that the receivables sort of improve uh, for us, uh, I think materially, but then that is probably over the medium term, right? So because what is happening is, um, given the nature of the business we do in transit, et cetera, so there, there are two scenarios. One is the mix of the international business improves quite materially. I think that is happening slowly and over the medium to long term, that will that will happen. And we don't, we, we do fairly tight deals um, outside of India, right? So I think that is one. Uh, the second is the growth in the business slows down. That's also possible. Then the working capital need comes down, right? Um, I think the second scenario, we are in no mood to um, sort of get into um, at the moment or short to medium term, right? So I think we will we will probably get a little bit tighter on, on, on working capital, but we'll also want to continue using it as a competitive tool in the business uh, to power the growth. So that's where we'll be. Oh, fine. I think uh, well taken, Ashish. My last question now to you is, Ashish, uh, in our business, what is the single most risk factor considering that, you know, we have a product and platform business? And the second part to it is, you know, in terms of uh, our competitive moat, you know, in your own assessment, what could be the most important competitive moat which Orion Pro enjoys which, you know, it can effectively use to fight off any adverse scenario. So, you know, if you could cover both these aspects, that would be really be good. Okay, so, you know, on risk side, um, like I said, we've methodically gone about um, planning for every risk that we could think of, right? So, um, what about the risk of slowdown in a particular segment? We said, let's have a diversified portfolio so that we can double down on the segments which are growing, right? What about the risk of um, structural change in the cost structure in the industry? We said, let's have IP. So we will surround even our services around that IP. So we got a much stronger earnings power long term, right? Uh, so we have gone and planned Avinash for most of the risks that we could plan for. Uh, um, the order book is strong. 
the products are are in the right phase you know most of the investments done so they are ready for prime time uh, so i don't see you know significant risks the biggest risk for us probably would be the tail risk that you don't plan for right so so like where did we get hit two or three years back um you can't imagine a pandemic uh, you know pandemic came in and suddenly all your transit business uh, volumes go to zero right so i would say a tail risk um you know can always appear maybe the pandemic pandemic reappears or something but most of the um sort of risks that we can plan for in terms of capacity in terms of demand in terms of diversification of products we have planned for and we feel fairly good about it um right uh, the other part of your question is actually very very interesting right so what is what is the competitive mode in the business to me a a well run technology business the strongest moat it would have is the ip that it carries right because ip is very very hard for anyone to replicate uh, right and and ip is what uh, so a software product right business it is probably the um uh, the, the best the businesses with amongst the businesses with the deepest competitive moats i would say enterprise software businesses would probably rank near the top uh, why is that the case Uh, take the example of the loan origination system that we supply to some of the largest banks in southeast asia the largest banks in singapore when the bank takes the system um one it is a very very heavy investment to get in it's a long term 2 to 3 year project to implement the software uh, then it is very mission critical to what the bank does it is the heart of your corporate loans business right for both those reasons you would really not want to migrate away from that platform it is just too painful to do it and that is why you know most enterprise software businesses have such um sticky revenue streams and 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 long lasting relationships because the moat is inbuilt into it right now how do we deepen that moat so ip itself is the is the primary moat right now um i throw some more crocodiles into that moat by Uh, doing my R and D setup, right? So I think that is the second strong lever we have in terms of the moat. We are one of the best R and D shops in in Asia today in the transit space. We are a very strong R and D shop in the in the banking software space, and we continue to deepen the moat, throw crocodiles in it, throw piranhas in it, um, and and continue to work on it, right? Uh, the third major strength of Orion Pro is our delivery reputation. i think we most of the relationships we have especially with the large banks across the region uh, are 15 20 year relationships um, we have a very very strong reputation and we are very very um, we are determined to protect that reputation and and continue to strengthen it right so i think those three things together uh, provide us a very very um, deep moat so you got a very strong recurring stream when you got a very strong recurring stream which is reliable a uh, building on top of it is relatively easy as we grow so i think uh, mr ashish thank you very much for your valuable time today and i think a very productive session from your side uh, friends if you do like the video please like and share it and uh, mr ashish once again thank you uh, best wishes to you and best wishes to the entire company management team thank you very much thank you avinash enjoyed the discussion thank you